Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, it's your boy DJ Cross on the mic right now. I'm um, just coming through with a with a quick uh, video just to show you guys how to um, how I made the beat for the rap song in 12 different accents from because I saw that you guys kind of want to see this from my comments. I'm just making sure my levels aren't too high. Yeah. All right. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, let's get started. So, I mean, like, if you guys been following me on like my Facebook, you probably saw that I wrote that I spent over 70 hours in the production of this beat and that is a hundred percent true like straight up the number one thing about production is that good production definitely takes a lot of time and a lot of creative thinking and um but yeah i mean 70 hours that seems overwhelming man that's like three days of work almost so it's like like basically i spent like i spent a good like 10 10 20 hours just uh composing you know composing all of these lines composition and uh uh producers um what am i saying composition like really consumes a lot of time because it's a lot of creative thinking you have to really explore every single aspect of your chord progression and explore every single possible melody and then you want to filter out the melodies that sound better and fit together well enough in your beat and so that definitely took like 10 to 20 hours and then after that you know i spent i spent like a good 10 another 10 20 hours just uh coming up with my sounds you know that sound is the second aspect of production that is extremely crucial to uh, that professional coming out with a professional vibe on your beats. Um, you definitely want to come up with a good sound. I spent a good time mixing, um, layering sounds over each other, and then like compressing, distorting, just playing around with the sounds uh, in general, just to get what I w want, just to get the the vibe working out. You know, you really want to balance out all your instruments, all the frequencies, and everything, which I will discuss later. Like, for example, I played around some synths here. I played around with some acoustic instruments. So, yeah, I spent a good, like, 10, 20 hours on that. And then, I don't know, if you want to count this, Rice Boy, he spent, like, damn, he spent, like, uh, 15 hours or so on the lyrics total. I, I'd say around 15 hours writing the lyrics. So, you know, the, the total work that goes into this is pretty, pretty insane. But, you know, we're proud of what we did, you know, and we're, we're really happy that we're getting all these views that we get. But, yeah, you know, so... And then after that, you know, it just comes down to mixing and mastery. That, <laughs> unfortunately, because I don't have the money to pay for a professional mixing and mastering, I do this all myself and I learn it all myself. And, you know, mixing is like one of the most painful, but also one of the most rewarding, <laughs> rewarding aspects of the production process, the post-production process, because you, you really spend so much time just re-listening to every single line over and over again. And then just, you know... It's it's so crazy how you have to do it, but it really does make a very, very, very big difference on the quality of your beat. So for all you producers out there, you definitely want to learn some basic mixing and mastering because that can definitely make your beat stand out as something professional and not uh, amateur work like from some guy straight out of the hood or something. <laughs> but yeah, dude, that spent, I spent like 30, 30, 40 hours on that because the thing is the more you listen to music, especially in louder volumes, the your, your ear starts to become numb to uh, sounds. And so you hear frequencies, different frequencies and different volumes. So you, after like you mas mix or master for like three or four hours, you always have to take a break and then come back again and then take another break and come back and re-listen and refresh your memory. So that, I guess that's the most uh, time consuming aspect of mixing and, mas mixing and mastering. So that was pretty insane. And then, you know, putting it all together, just putting all these lines together took a lot of time too. So, I mean, in total, that was like over 70 hours. So... Yeah, and then given the fact that I'm in college, uh, this beat took, like, hella long to produce, dude. Like, damn, you don't even know, man. But, I mean, this summer, man, I'm coming back to YouTube. Once I get free time, dude, boom, I'm putting out, like, video every single week, man. I'm, I'm going to try to do my best to do that. I'm going to try the be my best to build up a fan base and, to, you know, to get you listeners back in the loop of how things are going. So, yeah, without further ado, uh, let us get into the production process. So the first thing I did is um you know I listened to I listened to a lot of music. That's my first tip for you guys too. Um uh, I'm not gonna check my Facebook. Uh you definitely <laughs> listen to uh a ton of music. You always want to be super open minded. The most important thing I stress is you wanna listen to full albums, you know. Right right here this thing. I don't know if you guys have this this is called Spotify. This is an awesome application that allows you to just search up a song like, I don't know, like Drake. You can search up Drake. You can search up like 
love me fucking problem started from the bottom i know those is but I don't know if you guys like those, but <laughs> like, for example, they have like, they list all his popular songs up here and they have his full albums right here. And this is, um, this is extremely useful for producers. Like I talked to the Sony A&R one time to discuss my, um, my, um, my tracks. Right. And then the biggest tip of advice he gave me was to listen to full albums and not just singles, because when you listen to full albums, you can understand the structure of albums. You understand the structure of songs better and you understand how to pick out the good songs from the bad songs. So very, um, something I would recommend you guys to do for your producers, uh, is to listen to a full album, for example, take care. And then without looking at this, see if you can pick out and, uh, pick out which songs are the hit songs and see if you get them right. And that by Doing that and listen to music in that sense, that will help you um, understand what makes a song a hit song and what separates it from the rest of the average songs. So that is uh, really, really big. Um, that's definitely the first step to producing is listening a lot. Also, if you DJ, you definitely want to DJ. I'm a DJ, so I mean, I've been doing that for a while. Um, I don't know that what I just said doesn't even make sense, but <laughs> you want to you wanna DJ because DJing teaches you... Uh, uh, song structure that teaches you how to format beats how to build up and um create dynamics on your uh music in your music because um for me personally i started from a hip-hop background you know i used to produce beats for uh, rappers to rap to and uh in hip-hop you know it's just it's not about the beat it's all about the rapper the beat is just something for the rapper to manifest his skill on so it's it's really just about the rapper's lyricism and his punchlines and his flow. But when you get into like mainstream music, as I've been getting into and understand production on a uh, a more lateral view, I guess of things, you f you realize that you know it's so much more than that. And really, good production is not just the beat looped over like a hundred times per se. It's really it's so much more intricate than that. So you really have to, as much as you guys might hate mainstream music, you really have to listen to it because some of it has really, really good production. Like, I know you guys probably hate the song Gondam Style, but the way it's produced is amazing. If you listen to the stereo imaging, you listen to the balance of the frequencies and how the, everything complements each other, the production is absolutely incredible. So you guys really have to open, you know, open your mind up. Be, be, um, open, be open to listening to all kinds of music. You know, listen to, like, Drake, listen to... Two chains, even though you might not approve of his lyrics and what he um he, what he um you know raps about, just listen listen. Don't you have to listen to his lyrics? Listen to the song. Listen to how it's formatted. Listen to his structure. Listen to the sounds. What makes it stand out from the rest of the music? You know you can. I mean I don't know if you guys listen to um, but listen to like reggae. Listen to rock. Listen to EDM. Listen to everything. I mean that's what I do, and it really does help. And I know I've been going on this point too long, but. You know, listen, you, you, you utilize Spotify, use Pandora if you have that, use iTunes, use whatever you can. Always be on the lookout to discovering new music. Um, yeah, that's the first step to producing is opening your mind up, listening to all kinds of music. If you want to produce like jazzy hip hop, you know, you maybe you want to listen to more jazz. Also understand the roots of music, understand how the music uh, form was developed and everything. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to go on because I could keep going on about this for like, an hour but i'm gonna keep this concise so after you know after you listen to the music you get an idea of what you want then at least for me i go over to the keyboard you know i play i play a few chord changes i mean honestly uh <laughs> for like ratchet songs like these you know like with hella 808 and shit like <laughs> you really don't need to um it's not that hard honestly <laughs> these are these are the easiest beats to produce like because the chord progressions are so simple they're like this so this honestly this took me like what like 10 minutes to produce the um basic baseline but you know coming up the theme with um at least what i learned is that when you um when you produce you want to make sure you have dynamics you don't want the whole thing sounding the same like i said you don't want just a simple beat looping over like a hundred times so you always want to create variety so like right here i'm gonna play this for you i created um i created two baselines basically so you have the main one And then you have the second one. Those are two different chord changes. So I guess just, you know, finding the chord changes and what makes them sound good together and the lines, um, that took a while, maybe like, I don't know, like 30 minutes. But um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. That's the, at least for like 
this kind of music, uh, it's all about the bass line. Because, um, I mean, that's what gets people turned up, you know. <laughs> so, for me, ah, shit, I was peeking. Okay, I'm going to move the mic away. Okay, so, like, you always want to, for this kind of music, you want to develop the bass line first. You want to make sure you have a strong, nice 808 punch sound. Like, for example, for here, I actually, I layered two 808s. I layered one with, like, a, a sharper sound, I think. You can't really hear it because, and then you, I layered one with like a more bassy sound. I don't know if you can hear the difference, but I mean, yeah, I layered those and then I had like a compression with like a um, a pretty long attack to give it that uh, that punch. And then also I distorted it a bit because I, re um, I realized that, you know, a lot of you listeners, when you listen to this, you listen on your laptop speakers and laptop speakers suck. <laughs> they don't play low frequency. So I distorted... Uh, some of my um my bass my 808 kicks and gave it like a harmonic um expansion kind of so that you guys can still kind of list hear like the upper frequencies of the bass while you play the music that's basically what i did and you know here's my kick i wanted to go for something hard so and something that punched really well so i, I just uh, i looked around on my um around my drum kits and i got this sound i mean i tried to like it has as you can probably hear the kick has like all kinds of frequencies in it, you know, I just wanted this punch. So that's what I did for the kick. And then to put these together, I mean, that that's like mixing work. You have to like stereo image everything, make sure the frequencies don't clash and everything. Um, if you want, I'll go over that in another video, but I'm going to keep it brief right here. Let me just show you guys. Uh, these are the drum kits I use. See, for example, I got Gucci Mane drum kit, at least for like ratchet music like this. I got John Giuliano's, I got Vibe Kit, Zetoven, you know. This is like this is what's up. Like you guys, if you want a good like good eight oh eights, you wanna look into this stuff. Like I definitely would recommend um <laughs> definitely recommend Drummer Boy. Drummer Boy is dope as hell, his eight oh eights go. Um yeah, man, just look look up these like John Julian, he got like some hella dope custom eight oh eights. So that's that's what I use for this. Um but yeah. You know, it's all about the bass line. You know, honestly, this song could go without anything but the bass line. Like, here, for example, let me just show you. This is just like the bass line. Look. So yeah, baseline definitely most important. Um, but yeah, after that, you know, I just um, I played around with other melodies and harmonies to see how they can complement each other. And um, for when I when I produced this beat, you know, I really wanted like a a brass heavy like down south kind of vibe to it. So I added horns like right here. wanted that like hella strong brass feel right and to make it to um, make it sound even stronger you know I I put them and I duplicated them in different octaves and then I adjusted the volumes to make it uh, stand out more you know and then you know after that I'll oh, actually I'll have it here this is just a basic um, but yeah after that you know you just like compress it maybe add a bit of uh, distortion to it just to make it pop and stand out more you could also layer like some sharper synths onto it but like lower the volume really down to make it stand out in the higher frequencies um if you don't know what i'm talking about like with frequencies and compression and everything um i'll go try to learn it or i could i'll i don't know <laughs> but yeah you should really learn about us if you produce because i mean you're messing around with different sound waves of different frequencies but you know these are my main two lines just the brass and the bass you know i didn't want them to conflict with each other that's why i took out the bass right here and as you can see i made the bass only hit on the two and four whereas the brass they would hit on like the they would hit on a lot mostly the downbeats so when like for example when i play this like they don't conflict with each other because the brass has some pretty low frequencies too so <laughs> Uh, you can't really hear this, and plus this is the unmixed version, so that's why it might sound kind of kind of compressed when you hear it. But you know that's the main idea. Of, that's the main reason why I put these lines together in such a way. Like the beginning part where it goes like. If you notice, I actually I don't have that bass line anywhere else anywhere else in here except that I think the end, just because I don't want it to conflict with the brass, and that's basically it. 
after that, you know, I just add some random lines to give it some texture and some more flavor. Like I add some uh, some strings here. <laughs> And then, like, right here, I got, I got my main lead, like, right here. You know, just for that, like, 2 chains kind of feel, you know. You feel me? I'm, actually, I'm, I think I'm going to just let the beat play right now, and then I'll show you guys what it sounds like as I add more and more lines in. But, um, yeah, I mean, for that, for that lead, I think, I use Nexus. Um, I use Nexus for a lot of stuff. It's very, very useful. It comes in with a lot of good preset uh, lead sounds. For this one in particular, I use the dance lead called... Uh, LD theme in it too. Yeah, I gave that two chains feel kind of <laughs> two chains, but yeah, I love two chains. He's hella funny. He's the funniest. Oh, well, he's not the funniest. There's a lot of funny rappers, but yeah. And then you know after that, like right here for this part, I feel like it was kind of it was kind of bland, right? You know, you just got like the bass going on, and I mean, well, like other here, you got like the brass going on, right? But I feel like I felt like I needed something more to get people hyped up. To build a dynamic and intensity so that the beat could loop over again. So um, I added sirens right here. And to make those sirens kind of stand out, I made them sweep us uh, in a stereo fashion from left to right. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can hear that. You probably can't even hear that with this because this is mono. Um, but yeah, this is the essence of the beat, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, you know, I just added like some random lines, you know. Like for example, the bass here, here, I felt like you couldn't really hear it, so I added another piano line on top of it to compensate. Let me, let me just take everything out, this is what it sounds like. Yeah, also uh, the reason why I chose piano instead of like a synth or something is just to, you know, give it that acoustic feel, because I feel like um, when you add acoustic instruments and you balance it out with like synth, synthetic instruments it helps uh give a more down-to-earth vibe to your to your song that's how i feel like especially for songs like these that go hard but at the same time i don't want them to go like hella edm i i might add like acoustic instruments like like strings like i had strings i had piano just to make it feel more down to earth and yeah let's see and yeah you know these are just like some couple random lines i added in just to give it more flavor like this lead I actually I don't know if I included that for the final version, but you know that's that's essentially the whole beat. And then I just want to talk real quick before I get into the next part. Before I start messing with these lines, is that the um the second most important part to produce? Fuck, what am I doing? <laughs> the second most important part in producing is um is building up and um, structuring your dynamics. You know, a beat as nerdy as this may sound, a beat is essentially a good production is a sine wave, like. You really want to make sure your beat has its um, peaks and its troughs and its peak more peaks and troughs. It wants to you want your beat to build up and then die down and then build up again and die down because that's what uh, really catches your uh, listeners' attention is just how the beat um, how the beat changes over time. You know, you know honestly like <laughs> it's really philosophical, but this this honestly applies to like every single aspect of life. You know, if you think about it, every thing in life it always goes up to a climax and it dies down to a bot, uh, trough and you know it's just this this thing that makes it be interesting so like this is the other reason why um i have these rises right here which i'm about to show you in a bit is that they help build up intensity and then when they build up to the climax it like it dies down and goes starts all over in the beat and then it builds up and it dies down it builds up dies down and if you uh if you listen analytically to uh, a lot of mainstream music they do this too and that's what um that's why i've recently been preferring to listening to mainstream music over hip-hop like underground hip-hop just because when you realize this fact you you understand that you know um this is like this is like real music like i'm not dissing hip-hop but like when you want to produce for real you really got to understand this concept and you got to understand how to make a more uh how to approach to be in a more um, melodic, melodic sense than just like a a repetitive rhythmic beat you know so i mean that's just my opinion you can hate me all you want, but I feel like a good beat, you know, you got to understand how to, how to balance, how to balance intensities, how to balance everything, how to balance frequencies, how to balance rhythms. And, you know, a lot of hip hop beats, underground hip hop beats, they just, they're just loops. They don't, they, they're just continuous loops. They don't, they're like, I don't know. They're like monochromatic in a sense, like where these would be like, these represent like, these go all over the spectrum. Um, yeah. 
So, and then I have my crashes, hits here. These are all these are all stuff to build things up with. Dynamics are very, very, very important. You know, that was actually one of the main reasons I didn't get signed by uh, Sony. Because when I was showing them my stuff, the, the biggest problem, the issue with my stuff coming from a hip-hop background is that I didn't have dynamics in my beats. And so um, that's the reason why I didn't, didn't like it so much. But then afterwards, you know, when I started fixing these issues, I sent... I sent some of my material back to the A&R. He was like, oh, this sounds so much better, you know. So, I mean, as of right now, I'm still working on my material. I definitely hope to be, um, you know, to progress upwards. But right now, I feel like, you know, there's there's a long way to go for me. Um, I'm definitely far from being, the, like, the best producer in the world. So I still have a lot to learn. I'm still trying to focus on understanding what makes a hit song a hit song, you know. So, yeah, you know, here, let me just let me give you a few examples, like, Here's some of my rises. I'm just gonna play them by myself so you can kind of hear them. So like, right? I, I layered a bunch of rises, but. You see how it just instantly dies down after that air horn? You know, like right here, I took out the beat right here too. Just to give it that uh, drop feel, you know. You know, that's what people talk about when they're like, oh, the bass is going to drop, you know. It's always about building up towards the climax and then dropping right down. And, um, you know, there are multiple ways to build up to climax. I'm going to leave that up to you guys to explore for yourselves because once you realize it's actually really cool. But the general concept is that you want, when you build towards the climax, you always... Um, you always go up in frequency and then you always drop down in frequency. In terms of um, sound waves, you raise up in frequencies. So that's why you have these rise sounds and they drop down. You can also do this in a rhythmic sense. You can do this in all aspects of music. You guys go figure it out for yourself because it's really cool when you understand this. It's like, you know, have you guys seen The Matrix? You know, it's like when you can see the code behind everything, you understand how everything works. It's just a really awesome, um, it's a really awesome, insightful experience. And so that's, that's basically it, you know. And then you also, you don't want to just uh, do dynamics with like rises. You want to make sure you have dynamics in your melodies too. And so that's why I altered the melodies between the two chord progressions, as you heard. And that's why, I'll, here, let me just let me just show you how I, I, how I did some of this. Um, so look, right here, I think this is, this is, let me play this real quick. Okay, so. This is the, the Mexican rapper, so listen to how it builds up and then dies down as the Japanese rapper part comes in. So right now, just drop down a bit. It's building up. You can feel the pressure building up. You can feel the intensity building up. And now... Unfortunately, that part, um, in, the, in the actual beat, that part isn't that quiet. The reason why it's so quiet is because this is the unmixed version, because I want to show you guys all of the tracks that I have, and yeah, but you get the idea, right? It builds up, dies down, builds up, dies down. That's the biggest um, fact I have to stress to all you producers out there. This took me, you know, I learned from like, I learned from um, experience. This took me really, a really long time to finally understand, and I, I really wish that you guys will, um, this will help you guys go far in your producing. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you know, that's the basic beat, you know, it's just this ratchet sounding shit. Dun, dun, dun. And then after that, you know, just to add flavor, you know, I added some ethnic, uh, ethnic aspects to it. Also to complement uh, Rice Boy's rapping. So, for example, you know, right here I got like Japanese sound. And then after that I got like Arabic sound. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And, you know, I had fun. I just played around with it. And, like, um, I think right here, you know, I, I played around. I was, like, fucking around. I had, like, some Jamaican shit. <laughs> some reggae stuff. No, not here. <laughs> just messing around, you know. It was a lot of fun to make this beat. But it definitely took a lot of time and a lot of a lot of late nights and staying up to see the sunrise. <laughs> but it was worth it, and I'm really glad that um, I'm <laughs> I'm really glad that we got all the feedback we did, even though a lot of them weren't so positive. You know, I'm just really happy to see, you know, our hard work go into like, you know, progress on our our channels and our promotion. So, thank you so much, thank all of you guys 
who uh, who actually decided to click the video when the video responses and listen to the original instrumental and you know get to know me as a producer you know i really appreciate you guys reaching out appreciate you guys for listening to rice boy even though his his uh lyrics may have been kind of um racist but you know we're not we're not we're not racist we're not about that life you know <laughs> we're just we're just having fun you know we're trying to bring a ra awareness to you know racism you know because we feel like um if people can just understand and like you know don't take life seriously if you can understand like understand um these cultural differences and just recognize them and not like just just like don't take anything seriously and just see life as a joke you know we believe that there'd be like uh, there'd be a lot more world peace if people can just not could like stop getting angry about like uh yeah cultural differences yeah sorry i suck at speaking that's why i produce <laughs> but that's basically it i know i have more stuff to say um oh yeah 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 okay yeah so let me just to a quick recap focus you really want to focus on composition come up with your lines after you come up with your lines you want to focus on mixing them together so they sound good as like one unit you don't want multiple lines going on at the same time taking the focus away from each other you want you always want the beat to be focused on one line at one time and you want all the other lines to complement that one line and then after that you want to focus on bringing out the dynamics in your beat you want to play around with the stuff see as you can see there's a lot of sp empty spots there's a lot of spots with like excuse me spots with like instruments and there's some empty spots that's how you want to build play around with the dynamics of your song you want to play around with the beat you don't always want the same like kick drum snare uh repeat repetitive beat you want you can play around you can just take out the kick take out the snares take out the hats or you know just only put the hats or something you know just be creative play around with the beat don't make it sound the same for the whole for the whole beat because you know that that just really destroys the vibe that destroys the excitement and the intensity of the beat and then after that, you want to go into the mixing and mastering process. Um, make sure that all your sounds stand out, all of them are heard. You want to make sure that none of the frequencies conflict with each other and cause distortion or any other sorts of issues. And, you know, that's that's basically it, you know. Um, you can try to learn mixing and mastering on yourself. If I get enough comments, I might make a video over summer. But unfortunately, as of now, I don't have the time to do that because, you know, school is sucking my life, dude. I've been like, oh, I got finals next week. I got like five assignments due in two days. I've been like seeing the sunrise hella. So, you know, I really don't got time here. But over the summer, I'm definitely getting back into YouTube and I'm definitely going to produce some stuff. Um, I'm also going to do some covers as well if you saw my little update video. But yeah, so stay tuned. A lot to come. Uh, let me just give me like 10 seconds to think right now. I just want to make sure I covered everything I want to go over. And conversation oh okay yeah so yeah so producing three aspects composition dynamics putting it all together sounds you want to make sure you have your sounds good okay and then you know that's basically it after that you're done and then you want to get into songwriting out if you want to talk about songwriting i'll talk about it in some other time you know there's a there's a lot of skill um going into songwriting as well but that's all for producing um, I know I'm giving you guys all my secrets. You guys probably won't even listen to my songs anymore now that you know <laughs> how I produce them. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna give you guys like some examples of like good pr pr good production that you guys can listen to and then look up to because these are some of the the production uh, producers who really like you know got me into um, producing. So, for example, um, if you guys know Calvin Harris. This dude is amazing. He really understands his dynamics very, very well, and he really understands how to develop his lines. Um, this is one of my favorite songs. Well, not I, I can't say my favorite song. This is a really well produced song. Um, it's called "We Found Love," and it features Rihanna. I know you guys might hate her, but it's a really, really well produced song, regardless. And I'll just play it for you, and then point it out, point out why it's so well produced. What the hell is Spotify? Yeah, sorry. College internet really sucks sometimes. You know, it doesn't even work. Ah. Uh. Oh. Ah. Uh, 
I think it's it's cause my microphone's weird. Like when it like when I input my microphone, like it just doesn't play music unless I like change the audio settings. Um, wait, can I do that? Uh, I'm, I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of lazy. Here, I'll play from my phone. Um, give me a sec. So I'm just gonna here. So as you can hear, um, Calvin Harris he starts out with a very simple simple line representing the chord. And then he comes in with the lyrics. As you can hear, the lyrics are very spaced out. The intensity is very low right now. And then it's building up. And then right here, the beat's gonna drop. And as you can hear, the this very uh, simple line in the beginning is being developed right now as he added a harmony to it. And then as you can hear, uh, Rihanna, her singing is becoming more and more, um, more rhythmic in a sense. You can really feel the beat right now. It feels like it's almost marching in a sense. It's building up. It's becoming more rhythmic. The intensity is developing. And then right here, it's going to drop and it's going to rise. Boom, 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 boom. You can feel the intensity is building up. Frequencies are rising. It's going up, it's going up, it's going up. And now it's the beat's going to drop. And now it's like at back at the low intensity. Well, not as low, but you know it drops. And now, now it's just chilling. The beat is cooking. And you know it's just it's just this kind of structure that makes uh hits on the hits on. Um, what else? I don't know. If you guys listen to K-pop, K-pop, um, Big Bang. I mean, I don't. I I like I only like a, a couple kinds of K-pop. You know, because a lot of the K-pop they they sound the same. The synths on their synths are the same. Their song structure is the same. The dance is the same. You know, honestly, it's really boring. So that's why I only listen to some to um to uh I don't know exclusive amount of K-pop. I don't listen to too much K-pop, but the ones I do listen to are very very well produced. Like Big Bang, they're very original. That's why I I listen to them over like Super Junior and everything else. Is because as if you if you ever watch the videos, they never. Well, they do dance, but they don't, that's not like their only kind of thing, you know, they actually, their music videos look like American music videos, you know, they focus on the artist instead of like the dance and everything. And also, also their, their sounds are very innovative, they always strive to create new sounds rather than like the, the stereotypical K-pop synth sound. For example, uh, Fantastic Baby, this is one of my favorites, there's so much dynamic in this song and, you know, they're really very good at uh, varying all the different sounds in this song so that not one sound like stays too long and gets born. It's always new, it always moves and always progresses. Um, I'm just gonna play a little bit so you guys can hear and kind of point it out, but I'm gonna leave the rest for you guys up to um, explore. Ah. You hear how the, the beat and the, the rapper complement each other? They fill up each other's empty spaces. It's that um that good mix and a uh, relationship between like all the lines in the song that make it really good, like hearing being able to fit all the lines perfectly together like a puzzle kind of. You hear the intensity building up now it drops. Wow, fantastic baby. Mm. You hear how how the producer he just plays around with the different dynamics of the song. Now it's like cooking. Right, we got a dope bass line, that's the thing that makes this song catchy, is that hella dope bass line. And then now and it goes down, now it's the verse, it's chilling. You notice that um, this is a very different beat than the, than the chorus beat and the intro beat. Another thing that I feel about that went, the other thing I feel that makes K-pop really successful is that the fact that they have like boy bands with like multiple members like okay wait actually I'm gonna here listen to this first see you hear how the beat just changes you know that's what makes the song interesting that's what makes it good and also oh actually I'm gonna play a bit longer listen to the dynamic You hear that? That was amazing, dude. Like, so he had like a, a low pass filter coming up into the verse, and then he slowly removed that low pass filter. And then after that, he started 
raising the pitches of the the rice. He started raising the pitches of like some of the instruments too, I think. And you know that was just really that's really amazing. Um, yeah, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say that um, the, th the uh, what I feel makes K-pop really successful is that because they have boy bands, they have like bands with like multiple members, and then they each of them they switch off for like verses. So. So, you know, they always, they can maintain an interest in the listener because the listener is hearing to multiple voices as opposed to one person's voice for, like, the whole thing. So, I guess, real quick, another tip of advice, if you're, like, a, a solo rapper or singer, you're just by yourself, you really want to make sure you have, you vary your voice, you vary the um, the pitches of your voice, and you vary the feel of your voice, and you vary the rhythm, the rhythm of the songs you produce because um, that's what will catch uh, the listener's attention. If you're only going by yourself, I mean, if you got other homies going in, like just just switch off, you know, because by switching off, you know, you create a, you know, you just vary up the vibe because everybody's voice is different, and then, yeah, that's what makes a good song good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, but this has been going on super long. I need to stop this. Holy shit, this is how long is this? Yeah, I'm gonna end this. Thank you guys all for listening. Thank you for supporting. Uh, yeah, let me know. This is my first tutorial vid. I feel like this was a very, very inconcise tutorial. But feedback, comments, if you want to learn more, let me know what you want to learn. Um, always stay tuned for new material, you know. Um, yeah, and I appreciate you guys for coming out, for checking out my channel. All right, I'm going to go do homework. Peace out, y'all.